Have you ever gotten into the mood to make three candle kits at once late at night with really good hair and makeup? That's strange, me too. This is a very spur of the moment video. I wanted to do something fun. I wanted to do something with smells and I wanted to do things with adorable labels and jars. And guess what? Brambleberry sent me two, count them, two of their new candle kits. They've rolled out a brand spanking new candle collection. It's quite luxurious and honestly, reminds me a lot of PF Candle Co. Maybe you've seen some of their fabulous candles at Urban Outfitters or online in your feed. I follow them because their aesthetic is perfect. And this first candle kit totally reminds me of their packaging. It's that nice amber jar with the craft label. So trendy, so delightful. This next kit I have here is actually one that I purchased because I love the smell. It's the emerald agave smell. I believe this is from the greenhouse collection. <laughs> I don't remember, but it's really, really cute. It comes in a candle tin. That ought to be fun. And finally, we have a wax I've never worked with before. Beeswax. Never made a beeswax candle. There's a first for everything with this lavender beeswax candle kit. Which one should I do first though? I'm voting the emerald agave because I think that'll be the easiest. We'll get progressively harder. Y'all wanna watch me unbox it? Yes, I'm on my knees on the floor so y'all can see my face. <laughs> Let me see here. So first of all, they have all the paperwork in a neat little package. I appreciate that. Looks like I have to cut out the labels myself. I don't appreciate that. They have a postcard in here that tells you everything that should be in the kit with some more inspirational projects on the back. I appreciate that. They also have a very comprehensive recipe sheet complete with not only detailed instructions, but a helpful tip section. I appreciate this as well. Ooh, what a cute little baby jowl. How many of these do I get? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, they just keep coming, don't they? Nine, 10, 10 baby jars and individual wrappers. Now, I don't think it is necessary to wrap each individual jar in single-use plastic. We could improve here. Mmm, the whole reason I bought the kit. The Emerald Agave Fragrance Oil. <sighs> One moment. Oh, you didn't think I was gonna answer it. No, I'm just silencing my phone. <laughs> I don't answer my phone in the middle of a conversation with a friend. Here we have our wicks. These are already pre-cut, so they're not super long and weird. And our Eco Soya Advanced Soy Wax. With everything removed from the box, we can now begin the actual candle making. The first thing they had me do was place all the silver jars into the box the kit came in to keep them warm and snug, put a little paper around them. And then to keep the wicks from moving, you have to place some clothes pins or some straws. Honestly, it's quite tedious and I don't find that to be the most effective way to keep your wicks from moving. The best thing to do is to use a wick sticker. They look like little round circles. You simply place your wick in the middle of one and then place the little sticker part into the middle of your jar. It won't move, it stays straight, and it eliminates the possibility that wick will just get up and float off the bottom. After that, I dumped all of my soy wax into this white pitcher and heated it up in the microwave on 30 second bursts until it was completely melted. It took about five minutes to melt the wax in the microwave. And the kit said that once it was between 130 to 145 degrees, I could add the entire bottle of fragrance oil. I mixed that in for one to two minutes, and then once the wax was at 130 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, it was time to pour into our little candle tins. I had to pour some of my wax out from the white pitcher into this clear pitcher with a long, skinny pouring spout because trying to get the wax to be poured perfectly into teeny tiny tins stuck in a box is quite difficult. 
With all of the candles poured, I closed the lid of the box, gave it a kiss goodnight, patted its wee head, and placed it on the counter overnight. Now I've got to admit, that first candle kit, pretty freaking easy to do. One type of wax, one bottle of fragrance oil, no measuring anything, one pour, easy. Will this second kit, the Serenity Candle Kit, be just as easy? We'll have to see. Let's unbox it. Okay, what we got in here? Okay, cool. So, once again, all of our papers are in one tidy little package. I appreciate that. And once again, I have to cut out my own labels. I don't appreciate that one as much. Ooh, bendy crafting stuffin'. Ah, yes, our fragrance oil bottle. I forgot what this one smelled like. Let's give it a whiff. Oh man, that's so good. Very fresh, very relaxing. I can definitely smell like some eucalyptus, rosemary, something like that in there. Very good. Did I have these in the whole time? How rude. Ooh, look at these heavy duty amber glass jars. These are quite sturdy little things. They've got nice weight to them. And this lid is very high quality. They are once again, all in single use plastic which I, once again, find unnecessary. But I digress. What we got here? Oh, I bet these are our wicks. Lots of wicks. Three jars, lots of wicks. Are these multi-wick candles? Huh. And we have some soy wax. Golden Wax 464. So before prepping things and pouring things, I noticed once again there are no candle wick stickers, but when I was looking on the tips and tricks, they said if you like you can keep the wicks long and hold them in place with cut straws or popsicle sticks. Lots of people like to do that. You can also use glue dots to secure them at the bottom of the jar. So they're noting Yes, the dots on the bottom really do help, but they still didn't put it in the kit. Why? So for the sake of these turning out perfect, I will be using the little dots at the bottom. However, take note, they're not included. And also after looking at this entire instructional thing, I think it's gonna be easier than the previous kit. So just like the Emerald Agave kit, I snipped the wicks to be the proper size. This time I added the wick stickers to all of the wicks, placed them in the jars, and then placed the jars into the box to keep them warm and cozy. Then I poured all of the wax into my white bucket. Now, they tell you to use a double boiler to heat the wax up and melt it all, but y'all know I'm not dirtying up another dish for no reason. And off it goes into the microwave for four to five minutes. When the wax was between 175 to 185 degrees, so quite a bit hotter than the last kit, it was time to pour in 1.3 ounces of fragrance oil. So with this kit, you don't just get to dump in the whole bottle, you actually have to have a scale and pour it in. You get 1.3 ounces of fragrance oil in there, and then you mix it up with your spatula for one to two minutes until it's fully incorporated, and then you have to wait for it to get to 140 degrees. So you have to wait for it to drop 40 degrees. After what seemed like an eternity, the wax was finally at 140 degrees. I am able to do this using my white pitcher because these jars have really wide mouths, which I appreciate. Also, this fragrance is positively captivating. And now that I've poured, I can see that these little wicks do need a bit of help. I'm going to clip them right into place. And for the second time that night, I shut the box lid, patted its little head, gave it a squeeze, and placed it onto the counter to sit overnight. Now I'm shook, but that second kit was even easier than the first one, and I have a little bit of fragrance oil and a few wicks left in case I want to do another project. So how will this third and final kit hold up? Up. I don't know. We'll have to see. I've heard that beeswax is tricky to work with because it's so hard and a little difficult to melt, but who knows? Maybe I've heard wrong. Oh yes. Once again, all of our paperwork is in this lovely packet, which I do appreciate. 
And look at this, our jars are not wrapped in single use plastic, which I also appreciate. We have our beeswax here. Ooh, it's crunchy. What fragrance oil did they put in here? Oh, it's an essential oil, lavender 4042. And you know what? I bet mixed with the beeswax, it has a bit of a lavender honey smell. And because it's a 100% beeswax with only essential oil for fragrance, this is an all natural candle. I'm looking at the instructions here and it seems that it's basically the same as the other two kits. So I won't bore you with the prep and the wick cutting and setting up. You guys have seen all that already. The one thing I am going to do different is I will be heating up this wax on a stove top because I know it's going to take forever to melt. I am also going to be adding some wick tabs on the bottom because again Brambleberry didn't include them but I know it is going to center the wick properly and keep it from swimming away. So let's make these all natural beeswax candles. So just like I thought this candle kit was pretty similar to the other two. Some things of note. Uh... <laughs> The pitcher I was heating the wax in was clearly uneven because it kept doing this. What is wrong with you? Now maybe using the double boiler method would have eliminated this, but it's so much work, especially when you can just keep an eye on it and heat it slowly. I was able to dump in all of my lavender essential oil, which was nice, no measuring required. And as far as pouring the actual wax into the candle jars, this was a little bit difficult and you had to move really fast. My unskilled hands ended up pouring all over the the wicks all over the clothespins. And before I could even get to the fifth jar, I had to go reheat the wax because it had completely solidified in the pouring pitcher and the silver pitcher. Oh, it was just a mess. I did finally get that fifth candle poured. To prep that fifth candle, I just removed it from the box and then melted everything down and ran as fast as I could over and tried to pour everything out into that little bitty candle. Even took the clothespin off. Then I put the clothespin back on and you can see by the time that I placed it back in the box, those other candles were completely solid on top to the point where I could actually remove the clothespin. So if you've never worked with beeswax before, it sets up really quick. Like it's two siblings before, I closed the box, read its favorite bedtime story, its origin story, gave its little head a pat and set it on the counter with the other two. And now I have three candle boxes that will wait for me overnight. I have a lot of labels to cut out and I'm just about ready to wrap up my night and I'll come back in the morning to take all the candles out of the boxes, put their little labels on, and then we'll wrap up the video with our final thoughts, conclusions, and price breakdowns. But until then I have to go to bed so I'll see y'all later. It is the next day and I have unboxed all of our wee candles. They sure are looking cute. And at this point there isn't a lot left to do to them. The only thing I really have to do is remove all the clothespins, trim the wicks down to a fourth of an inch, and put on the labels. Cutting out these round emerald agave candle stickers is by far the most tedious, but I was thinking about last night and maybe they want you to cut out your own stickers because that's part of the handcrafted feel. Maybe they really wanted you to feel like every bit of this kit is handmade, even hand cutting out the labels. So I don't know, maybe that was a purposeful thing to let you, the creator, feel more involved. Just gonna pop this label right in the center of this lid. That's pretty cute. Put the lid on one of the jars and put the jar wrapper on. This completed look is so adorable. The Eco Soya Advanced Soy Wax looks marvelous and as I've used it in the past, I found that it always has such a gloriously smooth top. Whereas 464 and other waxes tend to have a little bit of modeling they often aren't as 
smooth and the tops are just inconsistent. Soy wax is known for doing that and people who buy soy wax candles don't seem to mind that much. But for me personally, this is a little more rustic than I prefer. So after I put labels on all of the candles, I'm going to take a heat gun and I am going to clean up the tops of these candles by applying just a little bit of heat and melting that first layer so that when it hardens again, it looks a bit more smooth. So let's talk about what we loved and what we think could be improved. First of all, the packaging for all three candles is superb. I love the different graphics on these bands. I love how simple and legible the labels are. And I love that it's on trend. These don't look like a candle you would find in your grandmother's house. They look hip, they look young. I love the clear, easy instructions. I love that it's all bundled together in a very gift box so you could give it to a friend if you wanted. And I especially love the fragrances in all three candles. So as far as improvements go, they should definitely include wick stickers. That's a very cheap thing to throw in a box and it's so helpful to makers. And if they really wanted to up the game, we could add clothes pins. These are very inexpensive, but they make a world of difference. I also don't love that these jars came in single use plastics. It just seems unnecessary. Those are really the only three complaints I have for these kits. So let's talk about the price. All of these kits ship free in the United States, which is an added bonus. So whatever price you're seeing on the website is the only price you'll pay. The Emerald Agave Soy Wax Candle Kit is by far the best deal. If you broke it down per candle, the Emerald Agave candles would be $4.34 a piece, which for a kit is pretty good, especially considering that it is soy wax and these are extremely giftable and professional looking. The lab Lavender Beeswax Candle Kit is a lot more expensive. It's $49.99 or 50 bucks. That's $10 per candle. The Serenity Candle Kit, though the smell is delightful and I love these jars, is the most expensive by a long shot. There's only three candles in it and the kit itself is $38.99. So each candle is $12.99, which is a lot. I'm gonna let these candles cure a week before I burn them so you can check back with me on Instagram to see my burn test results. Technically you only have to wait 24 to 48 hours but I find if you give soy candles about a week to sit and cure they are so much stronger. All in all these are beautiful candles. The kits were super fun. I had a great time doing it. The three that I made today will be listed down in the description box just in case you'd like to pick one up for your next slumber party or maybe to give as a housewarming gift to a friend. And if you enjoyed this spur of the moment candle video, please let me know down in the comments below. I love doing spur of the moment videos. They're the ones where I feel like I get to be the most like myself because everything is just off the cuff and crazy. And until Wednesday, you have an absolutely marvelous day today. Be sure you go do something fun for yourself, whether that is, yeah, you know I'm about to mention it, going and getting a candle kit from Brambleberry. No affiliate links, not sponsored, but they do smell really nice, especially these lavender ones. Or maybe trying out some makeup from your high school days. Welcome back, Marilyn Monroe cat eye. You have been missed. Either way, just do something that makes you happy today, whatever that may be. And I will see you guys on Wednesday. So until then, bye for now. If you like to sniff candles, put I smell candles down in caps below.